Hi JCS, this is the January 20th version of the Parents Press. I'm here in one of the hallways of our elementary building. As this new calendar year begins, we're in the midst of preparing for our next school year. A major part of that preparation is completion of next year's budget. Over the next four weeks, I'd like to cover some of the major cornerstones of that budget using the Parents Press video as a way to communicate that to you. The board and the administration at Jackson Christian want you to be informed about our budget and our budgeting principles. It's important for you to know why uh, we do what we do when it comes to charging tuition, spending money, and receiving donations. So to help you understand that foundation, I'll be introducing some myths over the next few weeks that many parents believe about our school. Some myths uh, that even I believed at one time while I had my children here. I'll take those myths one each week over the next four weeks, debunk them, and connect them to the cornerstones of our budget. This week I want to talk with you about the myth of streets of gold. Sometime before the 16th century, a myth developed about the city of El Dorado. El Dorado was a mythical city made of gold-plated buildings, streets of gold, precious stones laying around, untold wealth was available to all of its citizens. The king even occasionally covered himself in gold dust, as the myth goes. Well, one of the myths that I sometimes come across here is that Jackson Christian School has an abundant financial resources and that the school has no financial worries. Well, I can tell you that none of us are covered in gold here. The hallways are not made of gold bricks, and there are no precious stones just laying around for us to pick up. To be honest and transparent with you, financially, we do struggle. Our biggest problem, like any business really, is cash flow. That is the availability of cash to meet our payables and our payroll obligations. Just like in your home, Sometimes the money runs out before the month does. Our school has been through financially hard times before and God is always faithful to us. He provides for us and he will in the future as well. However, the board and administration believe God has called us to be good stewards of the resources that he has provided. In recent times, our financial resources have dwindled significantly. The economic downturn of the last few years has put many of our school families in very difficult situations. Some have lost jobs, homes, their, their very livelihood. The result for us is loss of enrollment, increased delinquencies, and an inability to raise tuition to keep pace with our increasing expenses. One of our major expense increases, other than just salaries, is our, is our health care cost. Like any other business throughout the country, our health care costs uh, are significant. Last year, those expenses were projected to go up by 18%. This year, they are expected to go up by over 25%. Now, let me assure you, we fought very hard against those increases. We got very creative with our health plans and kept them to within budget. But to keep our costs in budget required either reductions or changes to our employees' benefit packages. All that to say, we struggle mightily to meet payroll and payables at all times. And there have been times in the last six or seven months when I was not sure where the money would come from to meet our payroll. God called on us to trust him. We did, and he provided, and we praise God for his provision. He is not always building, he is not always building our financial reserves, but he's always building our faith in him. You see, we don't have a deep well of reserves like the myth of El Dorado would seem to indicate. And the business model that we have works well in good economic times, but in harsh times, the model falls apart. But God's business model always works, doesn't it? Our school board is well aware of our financial condition. Each month I present to them a financial statement along with a detailed analysis. Many of our board meetings are spent discussing financial strategies and directions to keep us on a positive path. Additionally, our financials are audited every year by an outside third-party auditor. The audit verifies the strength of our financial processes to make sure we are compliant with generally accepted accounting practices. We always pass our audits and there is never any inconsistencies. In the end, we don't have abundant financial resources. That's just a myth. 
In fact, every tuition dollar goes towards an actual and necessary expense. All that said, we do know the one who owns the cattle on a thousand hills and is creator of everything. And God is in control of this ministry. It's not me, and it's not the administration, and it's not our school board. He is in control, and he is calling on us to join him where he is at work. Join me in praying for our school's ministry. God bless you and your